God's Grandeur by Gerard Manley Hopkins. The world is charged with the grandeur of God. It will flame out like shining from shook foil. It gathers to a greatness like the ooze of oil crushed. Why do men then now not wreck his rod? Generations have trod, have trod, have trod, and all is seared with trade, bleared, smeared with toil, and wears man's smudge and shares man's smell. The soil is bare now, nor can foot feel being shod. And for all this, nature is never spent. There lives the dearest freshness deep down things, and though the last lights off the black west went, oh morning at the brown brink eastward springs, because the Holy Ghost over the bent world broods with warm breast and with ah, bright wings. Churchill, Manitoba is littered with decaying man-made debris. Miss Piggy, a C-46 aircraft carrying hundreds of cases of soda and one snowmobile, losing power over Hudson Bay in 1979, the pilots turning back, crashing just short of the airport and narrowly avoiding crashing into the bay, instead clipping a power line with the left wing and crashing into the rocks. These Precambrian rock formations are some of the oldest rocks on the face of the planet, two and a half billion years old, give or take a few hundred million years. She sits there now, inanimate to our eyes, but with the view of a millennium, disintegrating to dust in a flash. I was a pilot years ago. This scene is a reminder of terrible dreams a reminder of a dear friend no longer walking on this earth. A reminder of my own end, inevitable. We sit and watch under the glowing sky with cameras made of rubber and silicon, alloys and glass, in the hopes of preserving the moment. And to what benefit? To understand? To understand? We sit and watch, trying to take it in, first with silence and then with shouts of awe. It borders on painful to see such indescribable beauty, so fleeting, gone the second it happens. This is why we are here.
the Ithaca IV, a Greek steamship built in 1922, once belonging to Benito Mussolini. Stranded in the bay 51 years ago, its once strong hull now ripped open by years of decay and rust. It sits at the edge of the bay, waiting for its eventual fate. It will continue to erode one day so much that it will tip over and break apart into further fragments. And at some point there will be no memory of it at all, and all the photos will have faded, and all the digital images of it will have been erased by some geomagnetic storm that will erase every magnetized zero and one, maybe in a thousand years. Maybe tomorrow. Imagine the lights when that happens. Magnetic reconnection is a theory. It's a physical process in highly conducting plasmas in which magnetic energy is converted to kinetic energy, thermal energy, and particle acceleration. It's a theory which violates known laws of physics. My colleague on this trip, who's an auroral scientist with two decades of Northern Lights experience, tells of an international conference of auroral scientists when one young researcher burst into the room announcing the lights were active right outside. Everyone jumped at the chance to see and headed for the doors. They stood in silence, awestruck, until one renowned scientist screams, that's impossible. Some scientist screaming at the sky, years of work evaporating before his eyes under the lights. Theories. 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 Do you see the lights? Did you understand? I miss the smell of my son's hair. Fort Churchill, the rocket range where over 3,500 ballistic projectiles penetrated the ionosphere, the magnetosphere up into the lower regions of space. Built in 1954 to study the effects of the aurora on long-distance communications, it was taken over by the U.S. government five years later. Missiles that were designed to seek out ways to circumvent the effects of the aurora, and also to gather data to improve weapons. Weapons designed to annihilate millions of Soviets. Some form of progress. Progress. Now it sits abandoned, industrialized decay, rust seeping between bonded particles, nature again stripping away elaborate attempts to conquer. We stand under this glowing sky, our feet on the ground, necks strained towards heaven. My grandfather saw these same stars in Denmark in the 1920s. 
Catherine the Great saw them, Edvard Munch, Napoleon, Pontius Pilate before the death of Christ. All will be forgotten in 10,000 years, maybe less. This will remain. <laughs>